in that the record clearly reflects that I sent my 2014 operating budget to Council on November 15th, 2013 in, com in compliance with Section 902 of the Home Rule Charter. And Council did not conduct a public hearing on same until December 5th, 2013. As it clearly states in Section 905 of the Home Rule Charter, a public hearing shall take place no, lo no later than December 1st of the fiscal year, emphasis added. This language is mandatory, hence Council's non-compliance with Section 905 makes any amendments to my budget improper and illegal. B. Council also violated Section 905 of the Home Rule Charter by making changes in budgetary items that exceed 10% of my recommended budget to wit increasing the mayor's confidential secre secretary's salary from 31085 to 36085 decreasing the city council solicitor's salary from 45000 to 40000 increasing the fire chief's salary from 50000 to 67228 decreasing the amount of overtime in the Department of Public Works Bureau of Refuse from 100,000 to 82,771.89. Adding a new position in the Department of Public Works Bureau of Refuse at a salary of 30,000. Increasing the business administrator's salary from 53,550 to 85,000. Increasing the finance manager's salary from 37,400 to 50,000. Adding a new position in the business administration office at a salary of 35,000. Increasing standard salary in the Department of Business Administration Bureau of Administration from 238-904-21 to 317-954-21. Adding a line item and new account to rents and concessions for cell phone tower leases in the amount of 18,000. All of the changes listed above required that a public hearing take place within 72 hours to justify said changes pursuant to section 905 of the Home Rule Charter. This requirement was not met, hence the changes are illegal and improper. Reason number two, administration meetings with the Pennsylvania Economy League. The business administrator and I met with um, Jerry Cross and Joe, Joel Boyle from the Pennsylvania Economy League for the purpose of reviewing my proposed 2014 operating budget prior to forwarding to council. Pell indicated that my proposed 2014 operating budget was reasonable and realistic. Such a budget is necessary for the city to continue operations as well as obtain a tax anticipation note for 2014. Since that meeting, not one Pell representative, nor anyone from the mayor-elect's transition team, nor the mayor-elect himself, has contacted me to discuss any amendments to my budget, despite the fact that on November 6, 2013, I personally contacted the mayor-elect and invited him to take part in the 2014 operating budget process. On December 12, 2013, myself, the business administrator and the city solicitor confirmed via telephone conversation with Gerald Cross, executive director of the Pennsylvania Economy League, that my proposed 2014 operating budget was reasonable and adequately meets the requirements the city must meet to continue operations in 2014. Reason number three, mayor's proposed 2014 operating budget procured 2014 10A. As evidenced by Council's passage of file of Council 56 of 2013, my budget procured a 2014 tax anticipation note, which will permit the city to have proper cash flow throughout the fiscal year 2014. The procurement of this note was based on my proposed 2014 operating budget. Number four, Amendments are fiscally irresponsible. The amendments as specified in paragraph 1B above, creating new positions and increasing salaries that council itself 
had previously reduced cannot be justified and are fiscally irresponsible. At no time did Council Members McGough, Rogan, and Loscombe meet with me since I forwarded my proposed 2014 operating budget on November 15, 2013 to discuss or justify these amendments. <coughs> Further, as I prepared this veto message, the Department of Public Works is readying its fleet and employees for a major winter storm that could bring six inches of snow to the city. Myself and the city controller have prepared an emergency certificate regarding this weather event. It is fiscally irresponsible for council to amend any overtime salary in the Department of Public Works any further due to the unpredictability of weather in Northeast Pennsylvania. Also, it has come to my attention that council's amendments to the business administration office are to be funded by an alleged grant from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. In pursuit of this alleged funding, Councilman Rogan at last night's meeting stated he had a letter from the Department of Community and Economic Development regarding this grant. The administration has reached out to the Pennsylvania Economy League and Pell indicated it was not aware of said correspondence with DCED. Finally, Council's amendment seeking to eliminate the Support Service Specialist position in the Office of Economic and Community Development and increase the funding for neighborhood police by the same amount is procedurally impossible. I have personally contacted the OECD Director and have been advised that the maximum allotment towards public safety through OECD is 15% and that level has already been met in my budget. And the mayor's conclusion, for all the reasons cited above, I hereby veto file of council number 55 of 2013. Sincerely, Christopher A. Doherty. So I just wanted the public to know the message that the mayor had sent to us prior to voicing your comments. May, may I just make a correction? Sure. Yeah. In Article 4 of the Mayor's veto, it states the amendments as specifically listed in paragraph 1B above, creating new positions and increasing salaries the Council itself has previously reduced, cannot be justified and are fiscally irresponsible. At no time did Council Members McGough, Rogan, and Lasco meet with me since I forwarded my proposed 2014 operating budget on November 15, 2013 to discuss and or justify these amendments. Uh, I did state at last week's meeting that uh, I did meet with the mayor. Uh, at that time, I didn't have any amendments in my hand, um, but we did discuss the budget, and his main concern was that his tax increase remain without change. That was the crux of the whole conversation. And uh, I did meet with him, so that's, that's not a correct statement under Article 4. And, um, I just wanted to correct that for the record. Unless he knew beforehand, before the meeting, that there was going to be a, that he was going to veto it, then that's an incorrect statement. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would also add there are a number of other things that are incorrect, um, which I will address um, under motions. The purpose of tonight's special meeting of Scranton City Council is to address solely one agenda item. Mayor Doherty's veto of the amendments to the 2014 operating budget of the City of Scranton. Council members will vote either to override the Mayor's veto, thereby including 17 amendments to the Mayor's budget, or to sustain the Mayor's veto, thereby eliminating these amendments. During citizens' participation, Speakers may address only this agenda item. No other issues can be discussed. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker this evening is Dave Dobson. Good evening, Dave Dobson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Well, we have some tough calls here, but my personal opinion is it's time to take that final bow and leave, uh, leave the city go on. Uh, we have 
9% unemployed, and I don't have any animosity towards the uh, union settlements or whatever, but it's time to stop watching Fox News and listening to Rush Limbaugh, and that's how we got here. You know, people vote uh, for the state has stuck it to us, and people are voting the way they, uh, uh, they're told to on television, and, and it's a shame. But uh, I would say I don't have any problem with, uh, with overriding the veto. And uh, one question, could, uh, could Mr. Courtright, Mayor-elect Courtright, reopen the budget after yes. the first of the yes, year? So this isn't the final say on this then? No. In other words. Okay. But uh, however anybody votes, it's, you know, uh, Basically, I don't care for the fact that he overrode the veto at all. He, he decided not to run again for mayor, and it's time to take the final bow and go out smiling. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you. you. You have a good day, too. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. You know, I'm basically going to uh, reiterate a lot of the, uh, the statements I made last week uh, prior to council voting in seventh order on the budget, um, and once again express my uh, you know, grave concern I have uh, for these amendments. Um, it's my personal opinion that I believe council this evening should sustain this veto. We have two budgets in front of us. We have the mayor's proposed budget, and we have the lazy man's version, as I think Mrs. Evans summed that up quite well last week with that terminology, because that is, in fact, what this is. Um, is the Mr. Mr. Uh, Miller, I'm sorry sure. to interrupt you, but um, that actually, that statement actually applies to the mayor's proposed budget as well. Okay. Well, absolutely, I agree. They're both, they're both, you know, budgets that are certainly unacceptable, but. Unfortunately, this evening, um, you know, we have to pass a budget, and, and a budget is, is obviously going to have to become reality. And believe me, neither one of them, uh, you know, is any good in my book, but certainly when it comes down to it, I, I, I don't feel that it is the common sense thing to do um, in terms of raising salaries, creating jobs. We're looking at a 57% tax increase, a 69% increase in the garbage fee, astronomical increases in the rental registration program, meter rate increases, just to name a few. And then you're going to come forward and ask for raises and to create jobs. It certainly doesn't look good in the public eye. In the last week, I've talked to many citizens uh, throughout the city. And it's, it, it certainly uh, came as a surprise listening to the, am the amendments last week because they expected to hear a council who tried to reduce the tax increase. And now we all knew a tax increase was inevitable. I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm not going to uh, make it sound as if I, I, you know, a tax increase is, is uncalled for. We knew it had to happen. But the reality of the situation is there was no attempt to reduce the burden that was placed on the taxpayers. There's no, it's, uh, there's no excuse for raising the garbage fee 69%. That, that does not have to happen. There's no excuse that we have to raise the rental registration. That also does not have to happen. There were many opportunities that council had, or more importantly, that the administration had, in following through on council recommended revenue enhancements that we've, we certainly missed out on several opportunities. And that's inexcusable. And had we followed through on those things, we would obviously be in a, di a, a much different situation this evening. We wouldn't be looking at, um, you know, increases in, in this, this amount. But, you know, it, it upsets me that we've come to this position where it seems to me that we're doing all the work for the next administration. And throughout this whole process, we haven't heard anything from the transition team other than raising salaries and creating jobs. And if those are the answers, if that's what the next four years looks like, how are we going to ever turn this city around? And we've heard that it's unfair to criticize the next administration because they haven't been sworn in yet. 
There's no justification for it. That doesn't mean anything. When the next administration that's coming in has an obligation to review the budget and make appropriate adjustments to help the city survive, that hasn't happened. And, you know, we heard that the raises and, and the creation of jobs are coming from grants and from DCED. But what we fail to mention is, you know, yeah, it's nice to say it's a grant, but that's just a fancy, that's just another fancy way of saying tax dollars because we're still paying for it. So there's the right thing to do tonight, and there's the political thing to do tonight. And unfortunately, we seem to go, continue to go down the path of doing the political thing. And we haven't heard from the next administration. And, and I'm very troubled by that. They haven't reached out to our finance chair, which I, I think to not even have the courtesy to respond back to a, a message or to a, you know, an inquiry, I think, is totally inexcusable. But ultimately, this council should not be doing the dirty work for the next regime. I feel that this veto should be sustained. I think the next administration should come in, let them reopen the budget, and let them explain to the taxpayers the justification of raising salaries and creating jobs when their taxes are going up 57% and the hardworking people in this community are paying $300 a year for garbage and the rental registration fees going up and it's going to drive people out of this city. Let Mr. Courtright and his group of the transition come in and explain that to the residents of this city because it's not fair. And is this the Christmas present we want to leave the residents of this city with? I don't think so because it discredits all the work that the majority of this council has accomplished in the last four years and I'd hate to see it end this way. Do the right thing, sustain the veto, and give the taxpayers what they deserve and put politics to bed once and for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes our sign-in sheet. Is there anyone else who cares to address City Council? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I'm probably going to not use five minutes because what I have to say isn't going to take a lot of time. I'm, I'm hoping that Council sustains the veto, and the reason for that is that I just think that there's a lot of politics at play here in every direction. We had Council member elects, and we have the mayor elect during the campaign that had a vision for the city that just is totally opposite of what's occurring here. And the other question I have is, the way the council is kind of split lately with the three-two split, I'm, and it's only, you know, look at, I don't have any disrespect for anybody on this council, but is the mayor elect trying to have this council implement things that he wouldn't implement on his own? And I think it's time for the mayor-elect to come forward, explain to the city what he wants. It's time for the council members to the get the council member-elects to come forward and, and tell us their vision and how they're going to change this city. And I don't know of all the politics that might be playing behind the scenes, but it's time for the city to leave politics behind because we're in a very troubled position here. Just the tans we're going to borrow next year is, is scary to me. And, you know, I know a lot of people out there, they're looking for jobs. They're, and everybody in the country is basically looking for jobs because unemployment is fairly high right now. But I think the next mayor needs to come in here and determine where he's going to make major cuts to this budget and stop borrowing because he's talking about going in a new direction and having the ability to work with the city's labor unions. He said that during the, during the uh, campaign, that they'd only negotiate with him. And if we're going to turn the city around, then we need an elected body that can stand up and explain why they're doing it and what they're doing. And why, of course, why they're doing what they're doing. And I, I just think that it's time to really to sustain the mayor's veto, let all the parties come forward, present their arguments, and present themselves to the to the voters and the vast majority of people who've given up on the system because Scrantonians deserve a lot better than what we've been offered and look at I, the last thing I'd like to say is that I I don't know if I'll be at the next meetings but I really appreciate every single council member and everybody who's run for elective office and I really appreciate your thoughts and your concerns for the city even if I disagree thank you have a Merry Christmas Merry thank Christmas you. Merry Christmas thank you. to you too
Faye Ferranis. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. It seems that everybody knows what the act is here. That this council, Mr. McGough, Mr. Rogan, and Mr. Laskam, all voted for those amendments last week. And it's very apparent that Bill Courtright had you do his work for him. He wanted you to pass them, praying that they would get passed so he wouldn't look bad. Now he's going to have to open the budget and probably we will put all of those amendments, which are his to start with, not, not Pat Rogan's or Jack Loscombe's or Bob McGough's. They weren't theirs. They did the work for Billy Courtright, Billy Boy. So he doesn't like it that he's going to have to hit the flag, but he'll do it. He'll put all those amendments in. He probably will raise the taxes because Attorney Hickey came here saying we needed more taxes, and he spoke for Bill Courtright. Make no mistake about that. And here we have Councilman Rogan who sat there for years and years and voted no to any tax increase. No, I, will, I vow I will never raise taxes on the people. Boy, you really changed your tune. And maybe you think you just got elected for four years and that's going to make a difference. Four years goes by very quickly. And if anybody, if you run for another job, whether it be council, whether it be the county, there's going to be plenty, plenty of tapes out there that show you voting for all these tax increases. And if anybody wants any tapes, just contact me or go to the library, because, boy, you could sure use that for a campaign commercial against Pat Rogan, the one who wants to raise the taxes for the people, the one that vowed he never would. And you also said just now that you want to make corrections to what the mayor amended. What is the reasons for saying the veto, why he wanted to veto it because of your amendments? So you're going to say what they were in motions. Well, I have a clue for some of the people out there. Just because Pat Rogan says it doesn't mean it's true. So take what he says in motions with a grain of salt, because he's been known to lie up there many, many times. And just because Pat Rogan says it doesn't mean it's true. And just know that Mr. McGough and Pat Rogan will be working with Bill Courtright. Anything he wants, go right through, because he's going to be there is puppets. Bill Gaughan's going to be your only one up here for the people. Hopefully, Jack Laskin will continue through the way he has. And please sustain this veto. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to speak? Mrs. Craig. 5A motions. Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, just, I, I think that we have debated this uh, enough and um, I'm ready to vote and I will respect the the considered vote of all of my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, I'll be very brief, um, only because it's the one item and we may debate it a little more when it gets to uh, time for the vote. But there are a couple things in the mayor's veto message that I want to dispute and I do want to read a letter that I received just today from Powell. Um, and this is regarding starting off with item two on the veto message, administrative meetings with the Pennsylvania Economy League. Um, the mayor goes on to say that Pell um, supports his budget and basically the mayor cites that as a reason for um, vetoing. I received this at five to five today um, from Pell. Um, it says, Dear Councilman Rogan, this letter is in response to your request of December 13th, 2013 for a review by the Act 47 coordinator of the proposed council amendments to the mayor's proposed 2014 operating budget. We reviewed the amendments to the city's proposed budget for both the effect on the budget's total revenues and expenditures and for the amendment relationship to the city's adopted 2012 revised recovery plan. Based on the review, the amendment changes will not result in a material change to the total revenues or expenditures as proposed in the mayor's budget. The changes will affect budgeted positions and in budgeted positions in both number and cost and will also change the proposed salary levels for certain positions that are included in the proposed budget. We note that one additional position created in the Department of Business Administration. This additional position was included in the Pennsylvania Economy League's memo to DCED reviewing proposed staff levels in the Department of Business Administration. We did take note that the amendment changes to the proposed Office of Community and Economic Development result in a decrease of $1,000 in expenditures 
an amount that is not material in the context of the office budget and is not otherwise available for use under the city's general fund. We also note that the amendment provides for a reduction in budget budget expenditures for unpaid bills slash court awards. We believe there is significant budgeted amount in the contingency line item so that a reduction in funding will not have an impact on the total category. Regarding the amendments in the adopted 2012 revised recovery plan, there does not appear to be a conflict between the plan's requirements for revenues to match expenditures, and there does not appear to be a conflict with any current plan initiatives for 2014. Um, so regarding item two in the mayor's um, veto letter, Pell basically just rebuked the whole thing, um, stating that the amendments in, in their eyes are fine, which is what the mayor was using as one of his reasons against the, um, against the amendments. Next, the mayor goes on to say, regarding the Department of Public Works readying its fleet for a major winter storm, and maybe the mayor hasn't read the amendments in full, but the amendments cut DPW refuse, not DPW highways, which the overtime for snow removal is built out of. Um, I don't think anyone would have supported reducing um, money for snow removal um, or our highway overtime. This overtime money was specifically in the refuse division. Um, finally, the mayor states that it comes to his attention that the amendments are regarding an alleged letter between um, Pell and DCED. Um, he states that the administration has reached out to the Pennsylvania Economy League and Pell indicated it was not aware of said correspondence from DCED. And I'm just going to call a spade a spade on this one. The mayor's lying. Um, the letter right here from um, DC, from Pell to DCED that I read last week. Um, to Fred Reddick from Joseph L. Boyle, Senior Research Associate, date November 27th, 2013. Subject, Pell analysis of the city business administrative staffing. If the mayor is unaware of this, and if he actually did call Pell, which I don't believe he did, because I have the letter right here and I will provide it to, uh, to the Scranton Times after the meeting. Um, so I did want to just rebut a couple of the errors that were in the mayor's veto letter. Um, other than that, I do agree with Councilman McGough's sentiment that these items have been debated and um, I, I do believe we should vote on them and where the votes um, lie, they lie. So that is all I have for now. Um, I'll probably comment a little more when we get to the vote. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman <coughs> Oscom, do you have comments or motions? Uh, yes, just briefly. Um, I think, again, most of it's been said at the last meeting, uh, what our reasonings are for, for different things. The bottom line is the taxes are going to remain the same regardless of which budget is passed. Um, I had to look over the, the whole package and regardless if the mayor could open his budget or whatever, um, anybody that's coming in should start out with the right tools. And the right tools are what I believe were some of the amendments in the budget there. Uh, one critical tool is going to be a business administrator. If you recall, when Mr. Darty came into office, his business administrator's position was $85,000. I would be the first one to reduce that salary to $40,000 for the next budget if they did not perform their task. But we need qualified people, as has been said in the past administration, and I'm sure future administrations will agree to that. Um, another increase was, was the fire chief's salary. Now this was a slap in the face to the, the current fire chief because uh, uh, last year this current mayor wanted to increase the current fire chief's pay quite a bit. Now he's reducing the incoming fire chief's salary almost $20,000, which would be, be below the rank and file. I mean, some of these things are a little bit ridiculous. But I had a look at the whole picture. My mother's going to be paying significantly more, and more so me. My property's on one of the upper ends of, of the, the level. I know where the taxes have to be. We've been told many times 
We've argued. We fought with PEL, DCED. Yes, they've been asleep at the wheel, believe me. But now we're at the edge of the cliff. So there was no way we could reduce the taxes at this point. So whatever budget passes at this point, your taxes aren't going to change either way. I looked at the whole picture and said, if our amended budget gives the incoming mayor the tools to at least try to right what's been wrong, that's where I'm going and that's why I'm leaning that way. The mayor's budget takes away some tools and adds some insult to injury. And I, one of our speakers has said, he's going out, let him go out gracefully, you know, but he doesn't want to do that. And I do want to quell some rumors, which I found quite amusing after last meeting. After the meeting was over, I walked out the door here, and I was told that I voted for these amendments, especially DPW amendment, because my son was getting the job. Well, I want to make it perfectly clear as I sit here, anyone that knows me personally, knows what I've sacrificed and will sacrifice, know that's a lie. Now, he may have been joking with someone. Hell, I've joked with, with, with a few people, said, I'm going to be head of lips. I'm going to be the fire chief. It's the last thing I want to do. But it was a joke. But to be accused that my vote is pending on any political vote that I make is totally incorrect. Because if you know the history of me, I'm totally open. You could ask me any question. And my son lost his job in the school district because of my votes here. And I would have been damned if I went and kissed anybody's butt to bring him back and keep him there. I would never compromise a vote that I make on this panel for anybody, even in my family, and they know that. He was in the school district years before I came on to city council here. Unfortunately, he wasn't in the union, so he wasn't protected by the union. But we made some budget decisions here that affected some friends, and he lost his position. And we live with that. But I would never, and I know a lot of people don't believe that, and they'll continue these rumors and accuse me of stuff. But those that know me personally know what kind of person I am. And my sacrifices know that that is not true. And I just wanted to clarify that because I'm hearing from different people, different rumors. So I got a call today from someone. He said, I want to tell you something. So the first thing I said, what? what am I going to be the fire chief now? I honestly can tell everyone that's watching this that I have never sold my soul for any position, nor would I sell a soul of any of my family members. What I vote on is personally my own beliefs. If my family had their way, I would have been out of here a long time ago. I do believe we're on the edge of greatness in this city. I do believe we could turn this city around, but we have to stop the squabbling, we have to provide the tools, and we have to work together. But no matter what way this budget turns out, everyone out there is going to pay the same amount of taxes. So to me, it's about the tools for the administration at this point. And that's why I'm going to vote the way I voted at the last meeting. And I just wanted to clarify a few things. But if anybody has any questions personally about me or my family, don't hesitate to come to me, and I will give you the facts. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, I do. <clears throat> I respect everyone's opinion on this panel. Uh, regardless of which way they vote tonight. But, um, like many of my colleagues, I stand by my position that I made last week. I did take the time to look at the amendments a little bit more in depth, and I do have some issues with the amendments. Number one is that the amendments made 
will make the budget imbalanced on paper. In no way, shape, or form were the raises and created position in the business administrator's office that is an additional expenditure reflected on the revenue side in the addition of a line item for a grant. Number two, in the amendments, no allotment was made for health care expenses for the new position created in the business administrator's office, which on average is about $14,000 a year. <clears throat> also, um, one thing I notice with the um, amendments is, okay, I agree that the fire chief's salary should be equal to what Mayor Doherty's fire chief's salary is. But that's simply an easy opening of the budget for Mr. Courtright in 2014. He has the power to do that and send that one item before council. Now, as far as some other things that were said about DP, DPW refuse and DPW highways, and I know this because I was criticized on it before when I made a, amendments to a budget years ago. When DPW highways over time is used up for uh, snow removal and whatnot, money is drawn out of the DPW refuse account. And furthermore, the DPW refuse account is generally a set amount to cover the days off being holidays like Christmas, Thanksgiving, etc., where the DPW doesn't work. And that those overtime expenditures cover the overtime needed for the DPW to collect garbage and recyclables on those extra days where they're required to work a Saturday or possibly even a Sunday. So I do agree with the mayor's assertion that cutting that line item may be harmful. Now, besides all of that, in the amendments, there's a 16.08% increase for the mayor's confidential secretary. There are other confidential secretaries working in City Hall that receive the lesser salary. So I don't see how we could justify giving a raise of a little bit over 16% to the mayor's confidential secretary, which will be Bill Courtright's secretary, but not giving an identical raise to the other sec confidential secretaries, which would be the HR secretary and secretaries, uh, uh, for instance, in the law office. You know, I, I, think, I think that's doing injustice to them. Second of all, in the amendments, there's a 58.73% increase in the business administrator's salary and a 33.69% increase in the finance manager's salary. While other administrative employees, they don't get any raise. Now, there's been some discussion that these raises are needed to find qualified people. Years ago, or not years ago, but four years ago, we made amendments to cut these salaries to save the city money. And now we're going to, well, the amendments raise them with the grant that is not guaranteed in stone. We don't know 100% if we would get that. Now, in addition, I just wanted to point out something that I forgot. The amendments, there are also no adjustments to pension obligations or necessary workers' compensation insurance for the positions that were created. So I would say whomever spoke to or whoever created these amendments, I, I wish they would have 
spoke to me or the business administrator to obtain just some basic and necessary information because there are adjustments that would have needed to be made. I don't know if some of these amendments were reviewed by Mr. Courtright's finance team or if they were just created, but there were some pieces left out. And believe me, I know. I've amended budgets before, and that's, I made that same rookie mistake in 2010. And I learned from it by working with the administration whether I like them or not. But it seems like no one really reached out to the administration here to get their opinion or feedback on these amendments and that they were just created somewhat haphazardly. Now, I'm not in favor of either budgets as, you know, there were, there's definitely missed opportunities. In the mayor's proposed budget, we missed the boat on various revenue sources that could have been sought after. But like I said, not Mr. McGough, not Mr. Rogan, not Mrs. Evans, not Mr. Loscombe, nor myself have control over that. I think both budgets place undue harm on the taxpayers of the city. There are no benefits to the amendments that were proposed on Thursday night to help the people of Scranton. In my opinion, the amendments that were proposed on Thursday night only help Bill Courtright. And when I ran for office, I ran on a slogan. It was called putting people first, not putting Bill Courtright first. And I stand by that. I stand by what I ran on, and that's how I feel about this. And I will be voting tonight to sustain the mayor's veto because one thing that I firmly believe, it's bad enough that the two choices that we have at this point are massive tax increases. But what's even worse is in the face of a massive tax increase, there could still be almost a 59% raise for the BA, a 33.7% raise for the finance manager, and a significant raise for the mayor's secretary. And that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I wish to make clear that I do not support the mayor's proposed 2014 budget, nor do I support the amendments to this budget. The new mayor had the opportunity to include his amendments in this budget, but he declined. Further, he will have the authority on January 6th, 2014, to open and amend the budget if he truly wishes to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, government service and leadership are not a political game because the winners and losers are the people we're elected to represent. Therefore, in the face of the most drastic city tax hike and fee increases in decades. I will not support these amendments, the salary increases and job creations they include, and the gamesmanship they represent. In addition, I so oppose the mayor's budget that as city council president, I refused to affix my signature to the 2014 operating budget legislation. Should an override of the veto occur this evening to include these amendments, again, I will not sign that legislation. The people deserve much better. And just as a, a final note uh, concerning uh, the letter from Pell, 
In the last four years, almost all letters from the Pennsylvania Economy League have been specifically addressed to Mayor Doherty and to me as council president. This is the first time the letter that Mr. Rogan has, this is the first time I never received that letter. And so, uh, though I've not spoken with the mayor about it, I would tend to believe that the mayor did not receive that letter either. Just as uh, I know I wasn't aware of the correspondence that occurred today between Mr. Rogan and Powell. But as our finance chair has shown, uh, these amendments are incorrect. And I think what's important to pick up from all of this is Powell wasn't aware of that. Powell, Powell didn't mention any of that, did they? Powell's interested in one thing only, and that's big tax increases. Powell was interested in taking us all the way to the Supreme Court. And uh, if, if uh, the new administration is already so interested in all of these deals with the Pennsylvania Economy League, I think that the, the hopes that the people had for the next four years are quickly turning to disappointment. And that's it. Mrs. Craig? 5B, no business at this time. Sixth order, no business at this time. Seventh order, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption File of Council number 55, 2013, as amended, appropriating funds for the expenses of the city government for the period commencing on the first day of January 2014 to and including December 31st, 2014, by the adoption of the general city operating budget for the year 2014. This vote will be to override the mayor's veto. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend City Council sustain the mayor's veto of item 7A as amended. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Excuse me. Yes, on the question. Uh, maybe I misread it. No, here's Mr. Joyce, rather than recommending an override, recommended um, that council sustain the veto. So a yes vote would be to sustain the veto, a, a no, no vote, vote would be, would be to, to override. override. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? No. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscombe? No. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare the mayor's veto of item 7A, file of council number 55, 2013, sustained legally and lawfully. I'd like to wish everyone once again a very blessed and Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy New Year. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.